Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode in Software Engineering and Salesforce. My name is Brooks Johnson, and today we are going to be taking a look at apexsandbox.io and the two-pointer technique. Um, first, I just want to give a shout out to, uh, the, I think it's a great resource for the community. Um, it's a bit of a kind of a leak code, a, a place to solve problems, but solve them in Apex. And the challenge, you've never really been able to do things like that on a site like Leak Code or Hacker Rank because Apex is a proprietary language, needs to run on Salesforce. Uh, so some, some really great contributors have solved that problem and given us some, some problems that we can go in here and practice. And for me personally, I'm, I'm a big believer that solving problems in code makes you better, makes you a better problem solver, even if they, even if those problems are not always necessarily reflective of your day-to-day -day work. Uh, still, I don't know, forces you to be a better thinker, uh, work through it. And also, in my opinion, even more, if you start to think like about the efficiency of your, of your program, right? Like what is, is this running in linear time, constant time and log in? Can we make this more efficient? Um, so today we are going to take a look at problem number 73, sorted list. I, so I was hopping on here and I was actually going to make a video about a different problem. Uh, but I'd also been thinking, hey, you know what? I Soon I want to make a video on the two-pointer technique and add that to kind of you know, problem solving patterns in Apex. And to me, anyway, this problem lended itself to the two-pointer technique. So I decided to make a video on this one and share my solution. You may have a better one, and feel free to share it in the comments. This is, this is what came to my, my mind today, how I worked through it, and how I solved it. So I'm going to hop over to IntelliJ, actually, because usually if I'm doing problems like this, um, I tend to not like to solve them in the... Uh, whether it's leak code or apex sandbox.io, I tend not to like to solve them like the built-in IDE in the browser window. I like to just go use my own tool and copy and paste it in later. Um, so let's hop over and let's take a look at this. So, well, you know, before we do that, how about let's talk about our problem, <laughs> right? Maybe that would be useful. Uh, we're going to determine if a list is sorted. So we're going to get a list of integers. Uh, we're gonna, and we're going to return a Boolean. And we need to determine, you know, is this sequence, is it sorted in ascending order, descending order? Um, if they're all the same, right? If this list contains 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, that's sorted. Um, so we need to check these conditions. And if it's none of these, we need to return false. And I, don't, I feel like this is kind of a, a tricky problem. I had to think about it for a little bit, how I was going to tackle it. And that is where I thought, hey, you know what? Two-pointer seems like the way to go. And I think this would make a good video. So I'm going to show you my solution and tell me what you think. So back over to IntelliJ. And I've got this method, uh, right? Public static Boolean is sorted, just like we saw on the screen. And so the first thing I'm going to do is check for one of my corner cases. I'm going to say if numbers dot size is less than two, right? If it's, there's only a, if there's only two things in this list, it's sorted by default. So we're just going to return true and we are going to bail out of this thing. All right. So that's our first corner case. If we get a list with one item, two items, this list, that list is sorted. Um, now what we're going to do is look at the two pointer technique, right? So Two-pointer technique, just like it sounds like, we need to give ourselves two pointers. And here's typically what I'm going to do. I'm going to do integer left. This one equals zero. And I'm going to do integer right equals numbers.size minus one. All right, because what I want to do is I want two values that I can use to index the far left value in our list of integers and the far right value in our list of integers. In fact, I'm just going to, like, I'll just, let me just put a, a list in the one, two, three, four, five, just so we have a, like a list to look at. All right. So I want to be able to compare this value with this value. And that's going to tell me, you know, like what condition do I need to look at? First, I'll say a lot of times when you're using two pointer, depending on, the problem you may 
move your left or your right pointer. Uh, for these problems, we're just going to move our left pointer, but we need the right to give us uh, something to compare it to. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, hey, if, if numbers at my left index If that is less than numbers at my right index. So remember, this is true, right? So in this case, numbers at the left index is one, numbers at the right index is five. So we know we should be checking our ascending condition, right? Um, and if, if in any case, right, we have a number in there that is um, greater than what came before, we are, we're false, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say while, left is less than right. And then I'm going to compare. I'm going to say if, we need some parentheses there, if numbers left, on my, I'm going to let that code completion. Like I am going to, you know, just going to get that out of there. Sometimes my code completion doesn't help me. Numbers left plus one is less than numbers left. I'm going to return false. All right, so let's talk about, right, so we are, we know from our, from our two pointers, right, left and right, we know that we should check because we compared the first and the last values in our list. We know, hey, let's check our ascending condition. Um, and then we're going to say, hey, th what's the next value? Left plus one. If that is less, so we know that every, so right, for this to be ascending, every single thing in here has to continue to be greater. This has to be greater than what preceded it. If at any point we get to a condition where that is false, we are just going to return false and we are going to exit out. So that's how we are going to check our ascending condition. Now we need to check, right, our descending condition. So let's say we're going to say if numbers left, right? and Numbers left is greater than numbers right. We're going to do the same thing. While left is less than less than right. But now we're just going to check the opposite condition. And we're just going to say if numbers left plus 1 plus one, any point if that is greater than numbers left, we're going to return false. There we go. And then we are going to increment left again, left plus plus. And I didn't do that up here. That's kind of an important part to this. <laughs> Right, uh, that's that's pretty key to this whole thing. Is we're going to continue to increment left. So if you are watching this for a minute, you're like, this makes no sense. You were correct. It did not. We must increment left as we go through this. Okay. So we that was we checked our ascending condition. Now we're checking our descending condition because in this case we had you know maybe five, four, three. So we're going to just say you know the number you know we're going to check that condition, but it's it's the same logic. If the number at left plus one doesn't meet the condition for the number that came before us, we're going to return false. And then finally, we're just going to check, are these the same throughout? So let's just do if 
numbers left, numbers right, and then we're just going to say, you know, if numbers left not equal to numbers left plus one, return false. And last down here, let's add this in, return true. All right. So, right, if we get through these, we've checked our ascending condition, our descending condition, and our condition where this list is contains the exact same set of values throughout. Now, those are the three conditions we can be in. If at any point these aren't met, and once again, how about I increment left, and I didn't add my while loop in there. If at any point those conditions aren't met, we return false, right? Otherwise, if we get all the way down here and we haven't bailed out by returning a false, we are going to return true. So let's take this and I'm going to copy and paste it into uh, apexsandbox.io. See what happens. Failed to compile. So we are, looks like we just copy and paste error, I'm going to guess. Oh, it looks like maybe we, did we have a an extra curly brace? Okay, boom. And look, we got that Salesforce confetti. And so here's something I really like here is this is pretty rigorous, right? I mean, that's a lot of test conditions. It just got thrown at your algorithm. So there were 12 tests that passed here. And if it blows up the first time, it gives you a chance to kind of look and say, hey, what conditions did I not account for? Uh, the first time I ran this, I did not account for uh, this condition, right? Um, like test, you know, 40, where the first, where the, where my left pointer and my right pointer were the same. I did not account for that. Um, so that helped me like, oh, hey, that, and I mean, I think it's kind of a corner case, but right, that's, that's where flaws in our software lie are in those corner cases. Um, so that let me go back and, hey, real quickly, uh, add in another condition to account for that. So again, I hope this was helpful. This was an introduction to using the two-pointer technique and kind of an introduction to my use of apexsandbox.io, which I think is a fantastic tool. I uh, hope it was helpful. Uh, if it was, please take a second, let me know in the comments what you thought. Hit like and subscribe like always, and I'll see everybody in the next video.